In one of your recent books, you talked about five forces that are affecting the global economy. So can you succinctly tell us how these forces are going to move the economy forward the next couple of years or so, adversely or positively? Adversely, I'm a fear, but positively, potentially. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, as a global macro investor for the last 50 years, my job has been to bet on what is going to happen globally macro. And uh, what I learned in my lifetime is that many of the things that surprised me happened with, because they didn't happen in my lifetime, but they happened many times in history, particularly in the 1935, mm -hmm. uh, 1930 uh, to 45 period. So these five forces have always interacted, and I think everything that we're going to talk about today will be related to those five forces, and they interact. And those five forces, of course, are the debt, money, interest rate, um, economy force. The second is the internal order or disorder force. In other words, the internal conflicts that we are having today and the debts that we are having today are the largest since the 1930 to 45 period. And also, you go back in history and you've seen enormous amounts of those. They have implications. The third great force, of course, is the international geopolitical force. <clears throat> uh, two great powers uh, that are rival powers. And then, of course, the uh, fact that there isn't a single world order. There isn't a single world power. It's very different than in 1945 when the new world order was created because you have a war, a dominant power comes out, or dominant powers, and they set the rules, and everybody goes by the rules. Well, this is a very different world. And so uh, those three forces, um, I wanted to examine those over the last 500 years because to think about rises and declines of reserve currencies, um, rises and declines of empires, and so on, I needed to get the perspective over that. And I discovered that the other two great big forces uh, were acts of nature, uh, which droughts, floods, and pandemics have killed more people than wars, and are certainly a dominant force at this time. And then the fifth great force has always been man's inventiveness and technologies. So we have these five forces interacting. So everything that we're going to talk about will be related to each one of those. And I think if we step back and we put that each one of those in a historic perspective, say how are their degrees of influence com compared to those in history, the largest wealth gaps since the 1930 to 45 period, populism and so on. So those are the five forces. I think if we're looking at them and their evolution, it's like watching a movie play out over and over again if you have that historical perspective. And as we're looking at it, what we're seeing around the world today as we go into the elections that we're going to see in the United States, which are going to be over irreconcilable differences about wealth and power. And then we look at the geopolitical situation. And then we look at the climate issue. The climate issue is going to cost us, it's estimated, between 5 and $10 trillion a year in a world GDP that produces $100 trillion. So anyway, I think that those five big forces as we look at, if we look at historical perspectives and analogous periods, I think that that'll help us. I think we have to be concerned about that dynamic that's taking right. place. But put it simply, for next year, are you optimistic about the global economy or pessimistic? Pessimistic. Pessimistic. Pessimistic about the... Look, you, you, have, you have a political, you have a monetary, you have an, a, a conflict type of environment. At the same time, you have the greatest inventiveness. We talk about this fabulous technology development that has so much potential right. to um, produce wonderful things, and then also it, it's a, it could be a problem. So if you take the time horizon, the monetary policies that we're going to see and so on will have greater effects on the world. And you look at the world gaps, so you can, it's difficult to be optimistic on that. And I think that now uh, the real issue, I think, is how we deal with each other. Right. Okay? If we, uh, it was said earlier very well, you know. Um, Peace. If we can, if we can keep a peace, if we can have a, a a healthy, competitive environment without having a war with each other, we will be in good shape. We will make ad, ad, adaptations. Okay. 